Boys and girls, well, welcome to another exciting week here at Northview Kids TV. It's your boy, it's Pastor Dwight with you. I am really excited that you guys are here. We've got a great time for you guys. We've got, obviously, Marvin is back. We've got a great story about how we can have hope that Jesus is coming back from Pastor Bonnie. Obviously, we have some worship coming up. So, wherever you are, I want you guys to just get on up because it's time to worship. Did well, someone say lovely assistant? Hello, Marvin. Okay, well, Pastor Dwayne, are you here, here to help? I am. I am here to assist you, lovely, Lee Lee. Okay, well, 
lucky for me. Yeah. Uh, my lucky day. It is. Thanks, thanks for coming. Oh, Anyways, you're welcome. How can I assist you today, yeah. Marvin? Well, today we have a magic trick. I about see we have. Oh, and I really, really hope it works. Marvin, that's I I love all the hope that you have because that's yeah. actually our story today is about hope, but it's not the hope that you're talking about. It's not? No, the hope that we're talking about, we're, we're talking about the certainty that something is going to happen. Oh, well, what is that that we're hoping is going to happen that, that we're certainly, certainly expecting and wanting to happen? What we're wanting, what we're certain that's going to happen is Jesus' return. Jesus is going to come back, and when Jesus comes back, yeah. he's going to make everything new. That's the hope that we have, that I have, that you have, and that our friends have, that Jesus is back to make everything new. That is the hope that we're going to talk about today. Wow, that is a good hope, but uh, tell me, Pastor Dwight, yes. why do we hope that? Marvin, yeah. do you remember the story of Adam and Eve? Oh, yeah, uh, there was a snake, right. there was an apple. Right. Yeah. And, and so what you'll remember is that when God created the Garden of Eden, when God created Adam and Eve, everything was perfect. Perfect! Adam and Eve enjoyed a perfect relationship yep. with God. They had a perfect relationship with his creation. Yep. And everything was perfect. Absolutely perfect. perfect. Yep. But, boys and girls, and, and Marvin, something happened. Do you remember what happened? Yeah. They sinned. They sinned. Yeah. Now, before we get to see, it was perfect like our little mirror is perfect. Wow. Look at that. It's great. Circle. Circle. There's something Shine. beautiful oh, in there. Oh, boy. Good looking oh, guy. Yeah. yeah. But then sin came in and we're going to do a little thing. So I'm going to safety first. Marvin. Okay. We're, we're just going to put that on you. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. smashing. I'll step and so back a little. Sin came in and destroyed that relationship kind of like this. Ah! Woo! That was so intense. You, were, you busted it. I really did. How sin busted that relationship. Yeah, but not perfect not anymore. Not perfect anymore. Broken. But Marvin, see, this what? is the hope that we have. What? Because What's on that hope? day, there was also good news. What? God said someone will come to repair that brokenness. Oh, oh, oh I know who it was. It was who? Jesus. It was Jesus. And so, kind of like, God said Jesus would come to fix that broken it to make yeah. a way that you and I and all our friends could be right with God. He was going to restore what was once broken. Wow. And make everything new again. Wow. So when Jesus comes back, he will make everything perfect again? Perfect again. What was once broken with Jesus. Wow. What was once broken before Jesus is now made wow. new when he comes. And that is the hope, Marvin, that you and I and all our friends can have out there is that Jesus, when he comes back, making everything new again. That is a great hope. That is a great hope. But yeah. there's still something that you and I get to do while we wait for Jesus to come back. Waiting, huh? We have to, there's some waiting to do. Okay, what do we do again? Three things. Three. Three things. Do you remember what they are? No. Well, the first one is to remember. remember. Yes. Ah. So we remember <laughs> God's goodness. We remember all the good things that God has done. We remember his truth. And grow. And then we grow yeah. in godliness. And how do we do that? We read our Bible. We oh, yeah. pray to him. Yeah. We come to church. We yeah. grow in godliness. And the last thing. Uh, tell others. Tell others. That's right. We yeah. spread. We tell others the good news of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we remember God's truth. We grow in godliness. And we spread the good news as we wait for Jesus to come. As we wait for him to come and restore. Wow. Good Good story. Well, you know, I that's just a little big idea. Really? Pastor Bonnie yeah. is going to come and tell us more oh. about the hope that we have in Jesus. Wow. Well, thanks for helping me with that uh, little magic trick there, Pastor Dwight. That was a smashing trick. Oh, <laughs> good one. And you were a moderately good-looking assistant. Oh, well, thank you, Marvin. Yeah, you know, you're welcome. It's fantastic. Yeah. I've enjoyed this. Yeah. Boys and girls, Marvin and I will be back. We love you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Senses fit this eyes that seek to find their hope in you. I made in your image. I made in your image. 
This heart that beats, this mouth that speaks more and more like you. I made in your image. I made in your image. Cause you are the potter and I am the clay. You're molding me, shaping me every day. Cause you are the potter and I am the clay. You're molding me, shaping me every day. I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day, picking up strength all along the way. And you know what you're doing in me. I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day, picking up strength all along the way. And you know what you're doing in me. In your image I made. In your image I made. Hands, his feet, these eyes that seek to find their hope in you. I made in your image. I made in your image. This heart that beats, this mouth that speaks more and more like you. I made in your image. I made in your image. 'Cause you are the potter and I am the clay. You're molding me, shaping me every day. Cause you are the potter and I am the clay. You're molding me, shaping me every day. I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day, picking up strength all along the way. And you know what you're doing in me. I'm trusting in the Lord on the day to day, picking up strength all along the way. And you know. Precious, you made me wonderful. You made me special. You made me precious. You made me wonderful. In your image, I am. Up strength all along the way, and you know what you're doing in me. In your image, I made. All right, this is where we just chill. No, we're not gonna dance, but this is where we come back. All right, you guys have just got all your wiggles out. Grab a pillow. More importantly, grab your Bibles, open it up, because here comes Pastor Bonnie to share the good news with us. Hey boys and girls, it is Pastor Bonnie here and we have another great Bible lesson for you today. Now just a reminder, this is another true story from the Word of God and the Bible is full of stories and they all fit together to tell the bigger story of how God rescues sinners through His Son, Jesus. Now today's Bible story is from the book of 1 Thessalonians. That feels funny coming off the tongue. Can we say that together? First, Thessalonians. Good job. Now, in this book, Paul writes about the future to encourage believers facing persecution or difficult times. Over the last couple of weekends, we've asked the big question, how do we live while waiting for Jesus to return? And we found the answer right here in the Bible. We always find the answers in the Bible. And we learn that while we wait, we remember God's truth, we grow in godliness, and we spread the gospel. Well, last week, if you tuned in, we learned from Pastor Dwight that in Paul's letter to Philemon, that we need to welcome one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and forgive as Christ forgives us. Today, our focus is on hope. But before we get into this weekend's lesson, I have a question for you. 
Can you think about something you're looking forward to in the future? Like an upcoming vacation, special event, or holiday, or something new you'll get to do when you're older. Or something maybe you'll do once COVID is gone. Now, can you think of why it is special or exciting? And feel free to pause the video now and talk that through. All right, welcome back. Let's keep going. So today we are going to learn about Paul's message of ultimate hope through Jesus and how he wrote to the church in Thessalonica, that's a tricky one, Thessalonica, to look forward to the future when Jesus would come back again. Let's look at God's word now and see what he wants us to learn about this hope that we have in Jesus. So open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and let's read along with Marvin. Now, as Marvin reads, I want you to pay special attention to what you can learn about this hope that we find in the Bible right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. All right, let's listen to Marvin. Hi kids! Our Bible reading today is from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13, 14, 17, B, and 5, verses 8 to 11. Ready? Brothers and sisters, we want you to know what happens to those who die. We don't want you to mourn as other people do. They mourn because they don't have any hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. When he returns, many who believe in him will have died already. We believe that God will bring them back with Jesus. And we will be together with him forever. But we belong to the day. So let us control ourselves. Let us put on our chest of the armor of faith and love. Let us put on the hope of salvation like a helmet. God didn't choose us to receive his anger. He chose us to receive salvation because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done. Jesus died for us. Some will be alive when he comes. Others will be dead. Either way, we will live together with him. So encourage one another with the hope you have. Build each other up. In fact, that's what you're doing. Thanks, Marvin. Now, friends, did you catch what Marvin read about hope that we find in the Bible? Well, I heard that the Bible gives us a very special hope and that we can have confidence in the future because the hope that we find in the Bible is stronger than just wanting something to happen. Hope in the Bible is expecting with confidence because we know that God is faithful and true. And actually, that reminds me of our big idea for today. Our big idea is that we have hope. Jesus will come again. Can you say that with me? We have hope. Jesus will come again. The Bible teaches that God is faithful and he promised that Jesus would come again. And because God is faithful, to his people, we know that his promise will come true. Jesus will come back again for all believers. Now, this message that Paul wanted to give to the Thessalonians was really important. You see, many of the new believers in Thessalonica and other churches around the area were discouraged and confused. When they heard the good news about the gospel from Paul, they thought that Jesus would come back very soon. So when several years had gone by and some of the fellow believers had already died, they thought that they misunderstood Paul. Why had Jesus not returned like he said that he would? It looked like they were losing hope. 
In his letter, Paul encouraged the Thessalonians by reminding them that Jesus will return, to not lose hope, and that Jesus would never forget them. Let's watch our teaching video together now and see if we can learn anything more about this special hope that we have in Jesus' return. Let's watch together. About 20 years after Jesus died on the cross and rose again, Paul traveled to the city of Thessalonica. The people there worshiped idols. Some of them even worshiped the Roman emperor. Paul told the people the good news about Jesus, and many people believed in Jesus. Paul started the church in Thessalonica, but some people did not like Paul or his teachings, and they forced him out of the city. Paul worried about the people of Thessalonica. They had not been believers for very long. So Paul sent his friend Timothy to see how they were doing. Timothy brought back good news. Even though the Thessalonians faced suffering for their faith, they did not give up. Paul wrote a letter to encourage the believers. He told them that Jesus will return someday. On that day, Paul said, believers will be freed from their sufferings. This message gave them great hope. Paul wrote to the believers at the church of Thessalonica to help them know what is true and to teach them what happened to friends who had died. The people could grieve with hope because Jesus died and rose again. God would bring with him those who had died if they trusted in Jesus. On the day that Jesus returns, the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout. Those believers who have died will be raised to life first then believers who are still alive will be raised up together to meet the Lord. We will live with him forever. No one knows when Jesus will come again. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night when you do not expect it. So be ready. God has promised us eternal life. He has saved us through his son, Jesus. Whether we are alive or dead when Jesus returns, he will bring us all home with him forever. So continue to encourage each other because we have this future hope. The prophets in the Old Testament told about the day of the Lord, a day when God would come to judge the world and save his people. Paul said that in the future, on the day of the Lord, Jesus will return for his people and judge the wicked. Believers live with hope, knowing that Jesus will come again. Wow, friends, welcome back. I'm glad you're still here. Now, I don't know about you, but this last year hasn't always been the easiest, has it? Birthdays look different now, holidays are different, and visiting family is different, isn't it? Even getting sick and dealing with health issues is so different now. I think both kids and adults need to be reminded of the hope that we have because of Jesus. I was reminded in this 1 Thessalonians passage that I have a great hope that one day everyone who believes in Jesus and has received this gift of his salvation will live with him forever. And you know what? That was just the hope and encouragement that the people in Thessalonica needed. And it might just be the hope that we need today as well. You know, maybe you even lost someone recently because of death. And that's sad and that's hard. But remember, friends, that we have something amazing to look forward to even when we're sad. We get to spend an eternity with a good God who loves us and cares for us. And this should encourage us, even when things seem hard. The Bible reminds us that one day all the suffering and sadness and death will go away and be no more. And because of our hope in Jesus, we should also want to share that hope with everyone we know and love. So friends, never forget that Jesus will return for his people. He'll judge those who don't believe him. He'll make everything right again, and he will come back. 
Believers can live with hope knowing that Jesus will come again. And today is a very special day. It's Valentine's Day. So I want to wish you a very special happy Valentine's Day. We love you guys. And remember, God loves you too. So let's celebrate God's love for us today. All right. Bye, friends. See you next time. Boys and girls, well, welcome back. This is our kids on Mission Peace. And for today, we're actually going to introduce you guys to a family that they're serving in Spain, the mom and the dad. And we're going to see how mom, dad, and their two kids, how they share the good news of Jesus with those around them. So let's watch this video. Hola, we're the Power Family. Welcome to Sevilla, Spain. We're here to tell people about Jesus. My parents are IMV missionaries. This is my dad, Caesar. This is my mom, Mary. This is my brother, David. This is my baby brother, Samuel. And I'm Rebecca. Check out our life in Sevilla. They ask us, why are you here? And so we tell them we're here because we have a message and we have a message of hope. We're, uh, we're a Christian organization um, and we want to um, help you. We want to help marriages. We want to help the youth in whatever way. You know, we, we're here to help you. We're here to love you. And we're here with a message. In Spain, a lot of people have heard of Jesus, but they don't know they can have a personal relationship with him. We use everything we can to point people to the truth about Jesus. Our home, our school, our church, our music, and even soccer. Some people call my dad the pastor who plays soccer. They have a, a huge understanding of, of Christianity. They know it, it's been here for for hundreds of years, but we're trying to, you know, finding ways to speak to them so they know the difference between an intellectual faith and a, and a, and a faith that saves them with Christ in their hearts. We want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts because you guys give and you make this possible. For us to come here, we can tell people that there's hope and there's a message, an eternal life in Christ. We hope that our friends in Spain will choose to follow Jesus. How's it going? Hello! I am really excited that you're here for our Kids on Mission Peace. Boys and girls, wasn't that an amazing video? What I loved about this video is the girl says, we use everything we can to point people to Jesus. So she said they use their homes, their schools, sports, music, whatever it is that they can, they use those things to point people to Jesus. And we have an opportunity where you, our friends out there, can point people to Jesus. Pastor Crystal, how can they do that? Well, we are doing something called the Pantry at the Mission Campus. It is a place where people can come, whether they are houseless, whether they're just struggling that week, or maybe it's even just that day. And they can come, they could get food, get cereal, Ooh, they yeah. could get hygiene products, diapers, anything like that that they may need just to help them through a little bit of a rough patch. Use whatever you can to point people to Jesus. Now, boys and girls, this is the challenge. Wherever you are right now, I want you to go into your home, open up your parents' pantry. Everything you see in there, you pull that out, you put it in a bag, and you bring it over the next two weeks until the end of February. You bring all of that stuff to Downs Road campus, and we will take it to the pantry. But if you don't live in, no, if you live in Mission, what can the kids do? So if you live in Mission, you can drop it off at any point. You can do it in February, yeah. you could do it in March, you could do it in April. You can come at any point. And maybe if you don't want to take all the things out of your pantry, you can always go to the store. You could do that. that, that's an option as well. But boys and girls, we want to make sure that you out there, you have a chance, the opportunity to be a Kids on Mission because you don't need to go to Spain. You can be kids on mission right here in Abbotsford. And in Mission. And in Mission and in Chilliwack, wherever you are. And so our challenge to you is let us, let us together fill up the pantry in Mission so we can bless the people of Mission of Chilliwack of Abbotsford to point them, to show them the good news of Jesus. Yep. 
think that's pretty cool. I cannot wait to see how much that you guys gather together to bless the people of Mission. I am, I am expecting that you guys are gonna go in those pantries, empty out those pantries, boys and girls. We can be kids so on mission. Much. <laughs> we will use everything and anything we have to point people to Jesus. Love you guys. Hi guys, welcome back. It is time for our February memory verse. It says, God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching us what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes and it is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. By using scripture, the servant of God can be completely prepared to do every good thing. Let's read that one more time. God has breathed life into all scripture. It is useful for teaching what is true. It is useful for correcting our mistakes. It is useful for making our lives whole again. It is useful for training us to do what is right. By using scripture, the servant of God can be completely prepared to do every good thing. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. I will see you next time. Happy memorizing. Couldn't find my way out Watch my troubles come surround I was lost, now I'm found Like a glimmer of hope That will never let me go You bring peace to my soul Between the lines, I could run and hide, but still you're by my side. The world could never satisfy. You've opened up my eyes to find. You give me technical lies. above lord i know i can trust you every step that i take you are with me on the way caught in rhythms of grace Between the lines, I could run and hide, but still you're by my side. The world could never satisfy. You've opened up my eyes to find. You give me technical lies. Between the lines, I could run and hide, but still you're by my side. The world can never satisfy, you've opened up my eyes to find. You give me technical
Boys and girls, wasn't that an amazing message about how we can have hope that Jesus is coming back again? Thank you, Pastor Bonnie, for that. And you know, before I pray, I just want to let you guys know, again, at the end of the video, what do we have? That's right. We've got this questions, questions at the end of the video. So make sure you pause it. You talk through those with your parents. And one more thing I want to let you guys know is that if you have not already registered to receive our ministry box, legit. If you have not yet registered to receive one of our ministry boxes, just head on to our website, northview.org under our kids page and you can find out where to register for one of these because we'd love for you guys to continue the discipleship at home. All right. So let's pray, and then we'll see you guys back next week. Father God, you are good. We thank you for the hope that we have that you, Jesus, you are coming back again. You're coming back again to make all things new. And so, Lord, would you just be with our friends, be with the, all our friends out there. Allow them to just walk with the peace that comes with knowing, that comes with trusting you. And Lord, would you just bring each and every one of us back to this place where we can continue to learn about the hope that we have in you. Father, we love you. We praise you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, I love you. We'll see you guys next week.